From VTV Channel 6 Studios in downtown Vernal, this is Local Point with your host, Chris Piner. Hello and welcome to Local Point. I'm your host, Chris Piner. On today's show, let's welcome Jeremy Tubbs and Trooper Brad Gailey, who are partners with the Zero Fatalities effort to promote safe driving in our area. This is an important show. I'm glad to have you both here today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, this is, you both come from uh, two different factions uh, uh, or, or groups or uh, organizations. How did, uh, how did you two team up here uh, to uh, promote this program? Who wants to take that one? You want to take that one, Jeremy? Um, Zero Fatalities was recently in our area to do a presentation to the community. And uh, with work that we recently have, have done with them, they asked us to come here on their behalf and share these messages with our community. Good. Now, when you say they, this is, uh, there's an organization, Zero Fatalities? Zero Fatalities, uh, they have several different programs that they work on to promote safety on the roads. You know, they, the, the Who whole... Who are they? That, I guess, is my question. Um, Zero Fatalities is run under UDOT, but uh. they subcontract with another entity, um, an ad agency that runs okay. the... Runs Zero the campaign. Yes, yes. Right. And this is, this is really outreaching, not just in our area, but it's, is it na nationwide or statewide? Or there are several states that participate. It's not quite across the nation, but for us, ac across the state. But Utah plays. We're, we're in on it. Yes. Right? And is, it, is, there, are there, uh, is there a reason for that? Is Utah n notoriously bad at uh, buckling up, or uh, is it just something that we, we feel strongly about? You know, I think no matter where you are, you're going to find individuals who uh, don't buckle up. Uh, but it's something that the state deems as a, uh, a safety measure to help travelers make it to and from their destinations. Uh, that being said, it's, that's why it's a major campaign in the state. I like that. I think we all know, it's almost like, uh, like the dangers of smoking. We all get that now. Uh, some still struggle with it, but we get it. I think we're we're kind of starting to figure out the, the average civilian population that buckling up is important. But why don't you tell me how important is it? What are what are some of the statistics behind uh, the difference between those who buckle up and those who don't? Well, uh, for instance, in a vehicle rollover, uh, estimated three of the four, or if four individuals are ejected, three of those four. Uh, will result in serious injury or fatality uh, from not buckling up. Another issue is uh, if you're not buckled up and you have passengers who are buckled up, uh, you run the risk of seriously injuring those buckled up passengers or uh, death to those passengers for not buckling. For not buckling. So we all know that. I, and, and is ejection from the vehicle the biggest problem? It keeps you in there then. That's correct. That's the biggest problem is when you're thrown out of a vehicle, or is, a, is certainly a problem, and it's the biggest problem, but is, yeah. Okay, well, good. Uh, I mean, we, we want to uh, we want to buckle up, so what are we doing about it, other than telling people, buckle up? Uh, well, uh, the, the legislator, legislature recently uh, updated the seatbelt law to where it's now a primary offense. Right. Uh, and with that, you're required, or you're allowed a warning and then a citation after that. Uh, as I've patrolled the streets, I've noticed after that uh, updated law, a large majority of our citizens have begun to uh, buckle up. You've seen it, you can see a difference then from before that law. And that law, uh, explain that law. Does that, does that mean that uh, it's, a, it's something you, if you see someone is not buckled up, you can pull them over? Absolutely. The, the law used to be a secondary offense where uh, you wouldn't be, we wouldn't be allowed to pull you over for not wearing your seatbelt. Ah, now it's a reason to pull someone over. Correct, now it's a, a primary offense and that can be the only reason for the traffic right. stop. Right, okay, so what is the, uh, get, it, this probably varies, I, this is my ignorance here, but what, uh, someone gets a ticket for not buckling up, what are they looking at? What kind of a fine or fee? It's, uh, it's a $45. The citation uh, with the new law uh, or the updated law, they actually have a. Uh, you can go on a on the website and uh, take a course, a crash course, and have that fee waived. Uh, ah, right. Is that is that part of the campaign, the zero fatalities campaign? 
Yeah. The course, that's, the online course. That's just with the legislation. The so legislation. Once Which again, we can see a buy-in from our state, from our good state. It really sees this as something important, and we should all be doing it. Uh, there's incentive. You got better things to do with forty-five dollars, but better than that, live right, <laughs> because uh, I mean the statistics prove themselves. Uh, all right. So how is uh, how is Tri County Health helping to promote the the campaign? Well, we are a partner with UHP uh, with some teen driving. Um, UNA High participates in the Don't Drive Stupid campaign, mm -hmm. where the students do projects and um, different things are planned to promote and to educate these fresh drivers on uh, good practices and how to stay safe behind the wheel. Yeah, and you'll be happy to know that as a teacher at Uwana High School, I've seen some evidence of this campaign there at the school. So we can thank uh, part of this partnership for that. Yes. Yeah, that's very good. All right, now uh, you mentioned to me a little bit off camera about November. Uh, there's, a, there's a special thing happening in November. The Click It or Ticket. Click It or Ticket, which is what? Uh, it's just, it's a campaign throughout the state um, to uh, it's an awareness, yes. right? A specific month to be aware, right? Buckle up, always buckle up. But, uh, you know, right now you'll hear a lot of people talking about it probably more than other times. Well, good. I appreciate you both uh, uh, filling us in a little bit on that. I want to talk to you some more about safe driving and highway safety. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. With advanced all-digital cable television from Strata Networks, you can enjoy jaw-dropping digital picture on hundreds of channels, exclusive local programming with VTV6, and follow your favorite college teams in incredible HD on the Pac-12 network, all with no contracts, no costly equipment, and no dishes mounted to your home. For details, visit your Strata store in Roosevelt or Vernal, or call 622-5007. Strata Networks. We connect lives. Welcome back to Local Point. Before the break, we were discussing the Zero Fatalities Program and some of the statistics that help encourage us to wear our seatbelts. Certainly, we want to see everybody doing that. You mentioned, Trooper Gailey, before uh, in the first segment that you've seen since the law has changed and a person can be pulled over for uh, not wearing their seatbelt, that there has been a difference, a visible difference, that more people are putting those things on. That is correct. Uh, a large majority of individual, individuals are now wearing their seatbelts. Uh, the one thing I've noticed is uh, shorter drivers or uh, women in particular tend to wear the seatbelt under the shoulder. Uh, right. And, and that can cause a number of complications. And That's not okay. It, it's not, no. And it can, it can also result in the same kind of ticket or the same consequences. So that is the correct. Seatbelt must be worn properly. And that's why we're also joined by our little friend here. Right, Jeremy, are you, what do you tell me about uh, what we've got going on in the middle here? Well, as a CPS technician, CPS meaning child passenger safety, um, some of the things that we note as we go through data from checkpoints and things is um, the American Academy of Pediatrics came out with some new guidelines recommending that children are not turned forward facing until they reach two years of age and 30 pounds. Uh -huh. And a lot of people want and to. And otherwise, tend to should be in a in a car seat that is flipped around. Well, that's what I mean. They should be back. rear facing in the in the seat itself. Yes. And then once they reach that, then we would turn them forward facing, and they would continue to be harnessed until they outgrow the weight of the harness uh, for that seat. And then the next step would be a booster seat such as this. Which is this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, some of the things that we look for with a booster seat for children, and a lot of them have minimums for age and weights before you can use a booster seat, depending right. on the seat that you purchase. Mm -hmm. But um, we really need to stress that the children need to be in this. The belt should still be at the center of the collarbone and the center of the chest as okay. it crosses the child. Not let the child put the belt behind them. Right. 
because that can result in Again, more injury. Again, it's the same kind of issue then, isn't it, is wearing it proper. Mm -hmm. Is this part of the, I can see, I can see sort of, this is part of, this is the actual seat belt for the vehicle. Correct. Then, right, this is not a thing that comes with the booster seat. Correct. Okay, very good. And, um, and then our law says that children should be restrained until in a, a booster seat until eight years old. Oh. Um, with the caveat being if they reach four foot nine before the age of eight, which most children okay. don't reach four foot nine until they're between right. 10 and 12 years old. Generally. And then the way that we check for children to know if they're ready to leave the booster and just ride in a seat belt on the vehicle seat, um, we call it the seat belt fit test. Yes. And you would put a child in the seat and have them with their back all the way back, buckle them up, and then if their knee bends past the front of the seat mm -hmm. and they can s and their feet are flat on the floor so it can support their weight and then we want to look and make sure that the seat belt is again resting center of the collarbone center of the chest and that the lap belt portion is low on the hips and not up into the abdominal area right and if they're able to maintain all of that for the entire ride then they're then ready you, to then sit you've graduated you can then, then correct do that. I, i've seen that's good information thank you for sharing that is the i've seen seats that don't have this stuff the back Right? Is, it, is that the same? Is that what we're talking about? You could go from this into, to something that is just the seat? You can. The this booster, particular I'll seat even breaks apart and you oh can it use does. just okay. the base. Right. However, a lot of your high back boosters nowadays, you see how this seat curls around the sides of the head? Yes. So it's giving that side impact crash mm -hmm. head protection. Good. Because two out of three children that are involved in a side impact crash actually perish because of the impact to their head oh. because there's no protection. Wow. But if you have this high back that offers this protection to the head, you're not going to see mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. fatalities occur. Yeah. Wow. That's good. Good, good information. Thank you. So um, hopefully, I mean, I, I always know when I'm learning something new, maybe our viewers are too. Um, great. Anything else we want to cover on the zero fatalities and, and buckling up? I wanted to ask about that very <laughs> thing, right? So distracted uh, quietly, but there are other ways that a driver can be distracted. So while we have you here, let's talk about some of those things. Absolutely. Uh, one of the one of the big distractions, obviously nowadays, is the those cell phone. phones. Those phones, those crazy phones. Everybody yeah. has them, and, and nobody can put them down. And uh, in order to uh, to help curb that distracted driving, keep those phones off, uh, keep them down. There, there are laws where you, the law states you can use them for an emergency. Uh, you can talk on the phone, but don't be dialing, don't be searching in the phone book. Right, shouldn't be ni manipulating it, and, and whether or not you should even be on the phone is, is something that many drivers probably <laughs> don't like. Um, but yeah, that's good. So distracted, absolutely. Texting, that's manipulating the phone, those kind of things. Absolutely. Right. Are we seeing any differences there, or is that getting worse? Or better? Uh, it's We're getting smarter, or is it still happening? <laughs> it happens. Uh, you know, you, you still see it as you're driving down the road. I'm sure that as you've driven in your personal vehicles, that you've noticed it. We're witnessing it. Yes, um, it's still there. It, they have curbed a little bit, uh, but it's definitely something we can work on. Right. Are there uh, are there other things that we should be aware of? Uh, those phones are pesky and and problems. Buckle up. Put those phones down. What else? Uh, definitely. DUI is driving intoxicated is, a, is a, again a big one. Uh, in the basin, we were first in the state, unfortunately. Uh, first and third. First meaning, and meaning people had been pulled over under the influence of something. That's correct. Evidence that they've been driving that way. We need to get better at that, right? So it's not just about yourself, but it's about the other people on the road. Thank you for being here, right? And thank you too, right? He did a pretty good job, right? Does this <laughs> little guy have a name? Nope, Ernesto he's so will quiet, he just can't it's, tell it's us. It's all buckled up and safe and happy. Well, thank you both for coming, thank all you. three thank of you. you and thank you for joining us on this episode of Local Point. Be sure to like VTV6 on Facebook, and we'll see you next time.